Welcome to another episode of The U. My name is Rafael Levo Ochoa. One of the most important jobs that the administrator has on the enterprise is making sure that they're complying with the policy. Now, let's be honest. If we don't comply with the policy, the manager is going to get mad. The CEO is going to get mad. I might get fired. Okay, let's not think about that. But anyways, let's focus on the reality of securing the network. Posturing is a key technology that we can use in order to secure the network. We talked about posturing before, though. We talked about it on the firewall, the firepower threat defense, also called the firewall threat defense technology, that can provide a technology called dynamic access policies. Now, it's a great technology, and it provides a good way for us to perform posturing. However, one of the things that it cannot do is if you don't have an antivirus detection software, or let's just say that the software is out of date, that particular technology is not going to force that software to activate or to install if it's missing. With the Cisco ICE posturing technology, you can make that happen, including trying to implement more sophisticated policies to make sure, of course, you don't get fired. Because if you don't comply with the policy as the administrator and make sure that people don't comply with the policy administrators, the reality is that we won't have jobs. So in order to make sure that that happens, we're going to show you with the Cisco ICE posturing technology how to make that happen. As part of the process of evaluating the Cisco ICE posturing technology, we're going to look at three steps. The first step involves us setting up a policy set. This is what governs what access the user gets once we see that he is complying with the policy or not complying with the policy when we configure the posturing technology. However, before we do this, we need to go ahead and configure or enable a posturing policy. There are defaults already built into the system. So if you just want to verify that the user has an antivirus software installed and that it's running on the system, you can just simply activate a default posturing policy. That's all you have to do. However, when we move on to step number two, this is where we get a little bit more into the customization. This is where we can tell the icebox using conditions. We want to make sure that this person has a specific antivirus software, that it's running a specific version, and that the software database that it uses to look for viruses or malware is up to date. Once we set up the conditions, we can then put it into requirements. The requirements is basically like a list of things that we look for or a list of conditions that we look for in order to know whether or not the person is meeting the policy. When we move on to step number three, this is where we attach the requirements that contain all the conditions that we're looking for. If he passes all these requirements that are on the posturing policy, we can then say that the person is compliant. If the person does not meet one of the requirements that we attach to the posturing policy, then he will not be compliant. From there, the administrator can decide using a policy set what to do, whether or not to allow the user access, limited access, or kick them off the network. Once we're done with the configuration of the posturing policy, we can then test to make sure that we get the results that we're expecting. In order to start the process of configuring the posturing policy, we will need to log into the ICE dashboard. Once we're in the ICE dashboard, we will select the sandwich icon on the far left and then select Work Center on the far right. Once we're in the Work Center menu, we will see the posturing options and we will select the policy elements underneath the posturing options. Once we're in policy elements, you will see the conditions that we have to select from. We will go ahead and select File, and we will see all the default Cisco defined conditions. If we select the funnel icon, we can go ahead and select the condition type and select User Defined. This will show us all the conditions that we've created. As you can see, I've created three one for the Cisco uh, PuTTY uh, application that needs to be installed on every single computer that logs into the network. Um, to verify if there's a particular bad file that exists on that person's computer, and also a good file that needs to be on that person's computer. If we select the PuTTY version condition that I've already created, 
you will see that I've selected an absolute path where the PuTTY application needs to reside on that person's computer. I can also select an operator. As you can see, we have the option of earlier than, later than, and equal to when it comes to the version that that PuTTY application needs to be in order to be compliant. If we go back to the other user-defined conditions that I've configured, and I select bad file, you will see that I've selected an absolute path for that, where I want to locate that bad file. As you can see, I've selected that this file should not exist. Or for the good file in the same condition menu that I just showed you for the user to find, I can also say that it does exist. Once I've selected all the conditions that I want to use, I can also optionally configure remediations. What exactly are remediations? Remediations are a way in order for the icebox to address the problems of the good file not in existence on the person's computer or the putty application not being installed. So if I were to select file under remediations, you will notice that I have uploaded the putty application and the good file to the Cisco ICE database. So that way it can address those problems as part of the requirements list. So now that we've done that, let's move on to the requirements list. To do that, we will go under policy, we will select results, and we will select posture and you will see requirements. Notice that we have three requirements, one for the putty application, one for the good file, and the other one for the bad file. If we go to the far right, you will see that I have attached the remediation actions to make sure that the putty application is installed, uh, and also to automatically install it if it's not there. We can also have a remediation action that verifies that the good file is there, if not the icebox will take care of it. For the bad file, I have chosen to display a message that tells the user he needs to remove this in order for him to be compliant. So that means he will have to re-log in after he removes the file in order for us to reassess them. Once the requirements are done, we can then move on to configuring the posture policy. This is where we're going to be attaching all the requirements that we just configured with all the conditions. So if we go to the far bottom, we will see that we have a posture policy called file checks. And if we move to the far right, we will see that one of the conditions of this policy is that this particular uh, policy, in order for it to trigger, users need to belong to an employees group on Active Directory. You will also notice that if I edit this and if I look at the list of different conditions that are in here, you will see all the different conditions that I've configured here or the requirements that I have under those particular uh, conditions that need to be met. The first one is the good file, the second one is the putty application, and the last one is the bad file. Notice that they have different icons on the left. What do these icons represent? Now, if you have a green check mark icon on one of those requirements lists that you have on the posture policy, this means that the good file in this particular case needs to be there. There is no other choice. The user does not have the option to skip this. So that needs to be there in order for him to be compliant. Now, for the putty application, I have optional. What does that mean? That means a user will be prompted uh, and given a choice to either say, you know what, I know it's not there, but I want to continue on without the PuTTY application being present. So that means that if he chooses to do that, he will be compliant. So this is where we're giving the user the choice. And then finally, for the bad file, we have audit. That means that we're only logging this to verify how many people trigger on this particular condition. It could be that we're trying to test this for further evaluation to see whether or not we want to enable this as a mandatory option. So once all of this is configured, we can then move on over to the policy set. Notice that we have three policy sets. We're going to go ahead and enable the posturing technology under the wired access policy. 
So we're going to select the greater than symbol for that in order to go in there. We're then going to select the authorization policies and you will notice that one of the rules is called wired employee access. And notice that we have one of the conditions set to these devices have to be compliant in order to match this policy and also be part of a particular Active Directory group. If they do match, then we're going to apply a particular um, restriction. In this case, a wired employee access restriction. This could be an accessless restriction or a VLAN restriction that we're applying to these users. Now, once we're done with all of this, we can now start the testing process to see how it works. As you can see, there's a lot of different ways in order for you to implement the Cisco ICE posturing technology. And hopefully I was able to provide you some insights on how to do that on your network. Thank you again and see you on the next video.